Hello and welcome to another episode of Simplifying the Law. Uh, if you are new or if you are joining us for another episode, um, this is a program where we explain laws that are being enacted and laws that have already been passed. But uh, generally, the legislation of the country, uh, we get into the nitty gritty um, with experts on the program who are able to go into the various sections and explain exactly what the law is. This is an initiative of the government of Guyana executed through the chambers of the Attorney General and Ministry of Legal Affairs and it was thought necessary as a means to educate the citizenry on the legislation of the country because most times persons are unaware of what the laws are and if you are unaware of the what the law of the country is then you are unaware of your rights so this program here seeks to connect citizens with the laws of Guyana with me today I have uh, Mr. Rumel St. Hill the AML CFD consultant at the Ministry of Legal Affairs and Chambers of the Attorney General and Miss Ayanna Fable, a senior parliamentary counsel at the Chambers of the Attorney General. And they would help me to go through the Real Estate Agents and Brokers Act 2023. Now, it is a fairly new piece of legislation, one which was quite necessary and it covers a lot of ground for an area which was unregulated up until the passing of the Act. So welcome and thank you for joining me guys. Um, if we could just get straight into the act, um, the Real Estate Agents and Brokers Act 2023. So Ayana, if you could just give us a little overview um, of the, the act. Okay. Thank you, Richard. Good evening, everyone. So the Real Estate Agents and Brokers Act, it establishes a regulatory framework to govern the real estate sector. The real estate sector generally has a history of fraud and there have been a number of reported cases here in Guyana over the past few years in relation to property fraud. However, the government, they have tried to tackle this problem by implementing legislation to deal with the issue and this legislation is one such act which was passed it was passed last year it came into force in september of 2023 and basically the act it provides for the registration and the regulation of the real estate agents and brokers for the purpose of promoting transparency, accountability, and integrity in the real estate profession. The act, it also aims to assist in the detection and the prevention of money laundering, terrorist financing, and proliferation financing. The act, it contains a number of parts, about 11 parts, and it addresses the registration of agents and brokers, licensing, it provides for penalties and offenses, basically, and the code of conduct of these agents and brokers. Now, I should say that, because you mentioned that prior to the passing of this act, there was no legislation dealing with the real estate agents and brokers. However, there is a provision in the Anti-Money Laundering Act which uh, basically states that real estate agents, they have an obligation, they have a duty to report certain suspicious transactions to the Financial Intelligence Unit. So if uh, in their dealings with, let's say, one of their clients, they suspect the, the client is engage in money laundering or so on, then they have a duty to report these transactions to the unit. And in the Tax Act, I came across a provision which basically require persons who are engaged in the business of being house agents to acquire an annual license. So 
but besides that, outside of that, there was Ghana did not have comprehensive legislation which dealt with real estate agents and brokers. So, so why is this legislation important or, or necessary? Okay. The act, it is important because it provides certain safeguards for persons who are seeking to invest in commercial or residential property. And basically, within recent years, there are so many persons who are seeking to buy property in Guyana. So why not <laughs> protect, um, protect those persons who want to invest by creating legislation? Well, I don't know if you have anything to add to what Ayana has said so far. Yes, very much so. Good morning or good afternoon to our viewers, depending on what time um, you're viewing this program. It's indeed um, a very important, comprehensive piece of legislation. It also now brings various entry controls to the sector. So now you have a more visible way of knowing and being able to tell that a person that you're doing business with is actually a registered real estate agent. So before the regime was just kind of open, and out there, so now you have a mechanism where even if um, you end up in a situation where you're not happy with your agent or broker, you can actually make representation to the disciplinary committee or you could take the person to the law court. So this regime is now a lot more comprehensive and a lot more visible. Right, so so what, what is the real estate business um, as set out in the Act? Yes, yeah, so what the Act does is highlight what exactly is what we will call real estate business and it harpers primarily on those who deal with matters financially so a person who is representing a client uh, for the sale of business a person who is managing agents who are buying or selling on behalf of a client that would also represent the real estate business um, but it also distinguishes such persons such as sales associates would more or less do that buying or selling but when they do this they don't deal with the financial aspect so the financial aspect is a huge criteria in terms of being recognized as a real estate agent or broker i just want to take this time also to um, itemize that they're they actually distinguish certain areas where you're not a real estate agent or broker um, but you deal with real estate transactions, so it's not considered real estate business. So let's say I'm given a power of attorney um, to buy or sell on behalf of someone. That does not per se make me a real estate agent. As an attorney at law, if I'm giving requisite advice and I'm doing actions ancillary to the sale, such as helping to register the transport or the registration of title, that does not make me someone engaging in a real estate business. If I personally am selling my own property on my own without using an agent or a broker, I'm not engaging in real estate business per se for the purpose of the act. Because the act deals with real estate agents or brokers. So of course you can still do this business on your own if you wish to. But this is where the act makes the distinctions between persons who are in the real estate business and persons who may be doing real estate activities but they're not in the business itself. Right. Uh, so, the primary objective, basically, of, of the legislation is to, is to ensure that the sector functions in a regulated uh, and uh, transparent manner. And, and the Act makes mention to an authority responsible, given the responsible of, of, of being a governing body, uh, basically. So, if you, you could take us through um, this aspect of the governing body, the authority. Yes, yeah, certainly. No problem at all. Um, I think it's very commendable of the government of Guyana to look to have an authority um, for this uh, profession. As Ayana mentioned, there have been too many cases of horror stories where persons have their property sold more than once. Um, agents would have been dual agents acting for one party, trying to get higher prices, etc. So this is where the authority comes in to make sure that there's a fair playing field um, among persons. This authority will ensure that persons are registered as whether they're a real estate agent or broker. It has a number of players. Um, I won't go through exactly who they are, but representatives from certain ministries, representatives from the real estate sector. So you have a body of persons who will know persons who are in the industry and who have the requisite experience. And the authority will therefore highlight the type of qualifications whether it's by experience or whether it's by education or so that a real estate 
agent or broker is supposed to have. Um, they'll also look at sales associate as well. Um, and they'll also be the licensing body as well. So once you are recognized as a real estate agent, broker, or sales associate, you'll be actually be given a license by the real estate agent's authority. And through this authority, this is more or less where you'll have access to knowing if a person is registered. Um, you'll be able to make complaints to disciplinary committee and also those type of activities looking at the real estate agent authority. Right, uh, and they, um, I know, know one function of the authority is that they will also issue guidelines or um, code of practice yes. um, for, for the real estate agents and brokers. Yes, so this is um, another very important aspect. Um, so the legislation kind of sets out the framework for what is important. But then, of course, you're going to have the more granular aspects in terms of percentages. Um, you know, how much you're expected to get as a real estate agent at a bare minimum, kind of what they do for attorneys at law as well. And codes of practice, how you conduct with your client, let's say, to have agreements in writing so that it's clear on behalf of both parties. So just aspects like that, the codes of practice would then bring to you a code of ethics as well in terms of how you engage with your client, um, how you engage with other parties, all very important aspects of the real estate business. And so far, Trout, you've been mentioning two important uh, titles, agents yes. and brokers, and um, the, the Act specifically deals with these two types of uh, persons operating within the, the profession. So, so could you distinguish for us agents and brokers? Sure. I'll bring it from the bottom to the top. So we'll start with the sales associate. So the sales associate is the person who could be engaging in real estate business, but they're not um, particularly engaged in the financial aspect. You come one level above now, which is the real estate agent, who is more or less a sales associate, but they're now dealing with the financial aspect of the business. They could be a sole trader, or they could have their own business supervising sales associates. Then you go one level above that, which is a real estate broker, who is expected to be more or less a very experienced uh, real estate agent and he or she is not able to manage real estate agents and sales associates as well. Um, I also want to mention the authorities responsible for collecting information on anti-money laundering because the real estate uh, business is looked upon as one of the main professions that has a higher risk for money laundering or terrorist financing activities. So there's actually a questionnaire which will enable the authority to capture the information of the real estate agents because they're expected to be gatekeepers to prevent persons from more or less when they get money from illegal activities to try to invest in real estate because that is indeed a very common aspect done by money launderers. So by now having the anti-money laundering form, you get an idea of the type of business, the volume and capacity and you get to train persons to know where to make the suspicious transaction reports, how to recognize red flags and that type of thing, thus creating a safer society and fighting against offenses such as fraud um, and those type of offenses. Right. Hey, you mentioned that the authority would have the, the function of um, license, um, the issuance of license and re renewal of, of same. Um, right. So, so how, how, what is the procedure on the legislation to become a licensed um, real estate agent and, and broker? Yes. So currently, as the act is operational and the authority has more or less been formed, all persons who are currently engaged in the real estate business are expected to make an application now to the authority that they want to be registered as a real estate agent. The Act has provisions that I think the 31st of December 2025, they will now begin to register persons as brokers, but they're given a level playing field in the beginning in the first place. So um, more or less once the authority sends out a notice, I assume by um, newspaper, gazette or some other methodology, inviting persons to register, those persons who are involved in the real estate business will now have the chance to go and register as either sales agent or a real estate agent. Um, so they'll need to take their requisite qualifications, um, their basic information such as their their ID, um, if they're a company, their company information in terms of beneficial ownership. And then the authority would then issue based on the personnel a license. So 
me as a known attorney at law, I cannot just wake up one morning and decide I'm a real estate agent now and I go and apply, which is why they have persons on the authority who will be able to determine, okay, this person is a known real estate agent, this person is now coming up into it. Um, not saying that you can't be an attorney and a real estate agent at the same time, but at least the authority will be able to then, you know, have interviews with persons and determine their scale of business. And if they do qualify to be registered as a real estate agent or otherwise. Okay, thank you. Throughout you've been mentioning that, the, that you know, the authority also act as a gatekeeper somewhat um, to ensure um, compliance with uh, duties of, of the agents and brokers or, or generally um, persons operating within the scheme of the profession. So, so what are some of the duties of persons involved in uh, the real estate business? Anyone? Ayana? Okay, so the duties of uh, real estate agents and brokers, it exceeds just buying, selling, and renting property. It extends to ensuring that they keep proper records of their transactions, transactions relating, let's say, to the nature or particulars of their real estate business. So they should ensure that they keep records of uh, the identities of the persons, the parties to the transactions, the description of the property involved, the survey plans, valuation, certificate uh, of title, transport, it, their duties, it extend to ensuring that they supervise their sale associates. And in addition to that, they must ensure that they keep proper accounts of all of their transactions. However, what is important is that real estate agents and brokers, they are required to ensure that whenever they collect any money for their client that they deposit that money into their client's account forthwith. It is important that they do that. And they're also required to keep separate accounts. So their client's account must be separate from their personal account. And if it's said that they fail to maintain these accounts, then there is a penalty under the Act. The Act stipulates that there is a, a, a fine of five million dollars and imprisonment for five years if there's a failure to keep their personal accounts separate from their clients accounts right uh, and but separate separate and apart from the accounting aspect mm -hmm. i'm sure there must be some liability in terms of uh dishonesty or or um professional misconduct to use um, a more broader term. Mm -hmm. um, wh what, what would that liability be? Well, so if anybody or if any person, they are aggrieved by any, like, so any act of a agent or a broker, then they have the right to apply to the disciplinary committee that Romel mentioned earlier. They can apply there, they can make their complaint to that committee and uh, Upon hearing the complaint and determining the the committee, they can either reprimand that person, the agent or the broker. They can suspend their um, registration for a period not exceeding two years, or they can or they can. Or they can recommend that their license be revoked. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, does the Act make provision for persons affected by uh, the professional misconduct? Yes, the Act makes provision for that. The Act makes provision for that, and as I was mentioning just now, it's the yes. it's through the disciplinary disciplinary committee that they can make their complaints through, and. Uh, as it relates to professional misconduct, I think it's section 40 of the Act which speaks about that. It makes provision for that. If any person is found to be dishonest or if they're found to 
be engaging in any act of gross misconduct or so on. All these things, they can be categorized as a form of professional misconduct. Also, persons who basically have a real estate business under more than one names, that is also a form of misconduct. In addition to that, if a person, if a real estate agent or a broker, they conduct business on behalf of the owner of a property without that owner's consent, that is also professional misconduct. So the act, it provides a list of, of things which are considered as professional misconduct. And as I would have stated, there are penalties for these things. So, so what are those uh, penalties? The penalties? Well... Providing that a person makes a complaint, there's a particular period in which a uh, complaint can be made. A complaint must be made in writing before the expiration of one year. And uh, once this complaint is made, the disciplinary committee, they have a procedure which they follow. I will not set out that procedure now, <laughs> but there's a procedure which has to be followed. and. Uh, Based on that, when they conclude, if they come to a decision that the, the person was wronged by, let's say, the agent or the broker, then that, pers that agent or broker can have their license um, revoked, they can have their registration suspended, or like I said before, they can be reprimanded. Right. Mm -hmm. the, the Act also has an entire part which deals with offenses and penalties, mm -hmm. uh, part 10 of the Act. So, um, Roman, I don't know if you, if, if you would do us the pleasure by taking us through um, the, that section there, that part of no the problem. Act, or what, what are the offenses and penalties? Sure, no problem at all. So, um, you have to keep in mind that you have to report these penalties, sorry, these um, alleged offenses within two years. Um, if it happens to be a summary offence, so just keeping that there in mind as placed within the act. Um, so some of it cascades over in professional conduct activities. So um, instances, for example, persons that has a dual agent for both the owner and the seller. Um, if you inappropriately handle clients' monies as well. Um, if you make false statements on your registration form, so let's say you're learning about your qualifications, for example. You're more or less managing persons, um, more or less as a broker, per se, but you're not a registered real estate agent. Um, but mainly it comes up to the handling of monies, or if there's a breach of confidentiality, the penalties range. So um, if you're a natural person, this can go between, I believe, one and five million dollars. And if you are a body corporate, which is basically a company of any sort, these penalties can go up to $20 million. But what's interesting is that the Act makes provision, so let's say you happen to be convicted of an offense under the Anti-Money Laundering Act, that will more or less bar literally bar you from becoming a real estate agent or broker. So it cascades into a number of different regimes. And it all comes back down to confidentiality. This also is an area that you, of course, could be sanctioned for. You're required to keep the information given to you confidential. So you shouldn't be leaking information, um, you know, to other persons to, to, to try to drive up prices and that type of thing. Which is why I was mentioning before that agreements for sale are very important. So that is clearly outlined to both the client and the real estate agent or broker what the terms of the engagement are. And, you know, there are no misunderstandings or it doesn't change as the day changes or stuff like that. And I, I, I know... Um the legislation also speaks the code of ethics. Yes. Um, so, wh in wh what would this uh, exactly be like? Yes. Um, firstly, it has to ensure the number one duty, of course, is that the agent or broker has to be fair to their client. So that has to be number one. Um, number two, as I mentioned before, because the act now makes it more or less um, improper to be a dual agent. Um, that will also be included in the Code of Ethics. And you have to act honestly and fairly um, to be upfront all of the time. Um, if you're uncomfortable with a situation, you should always communicate this to your client as well, crossing over into the AML CFT regime. Um, in terms of suspicious transaction reporting, 
Um, as a professional, your first duty, um, as lawyers, our first duty is to the court. So the real estate agent, their first duty would be to the profession and to ensure that it is seen as, you know, I don't want to use the word clean, but basically one that is proper and looking to do business and to ensure that it's not being um, abused for money laundering purposes. So it would be the duty to like report suspicious transactions. Uh, for example, if they see something irregular which is going on, uh, which is something new that Guyana has to deal with because um, you have to learn to put your profession first as opposed to exorbitant amount of money persons may be willing to pay in order to try to get transactions done. Um, so it's going to revolve around things like that, ensuring that your profession is looked upon in the best way possible because it makes it better for business going forward, especially as more investors are coming into Guyana if they're seeing a proper real estate um, business, they'll be more willing to invest into it. Right, uh, and you've mentioned the money laundering there, right? Um, how, how does this legislation specifically um, fits in to the AML or CFD scheme? What, what does it do for us as a country? Yes. And um, how, what, what is the role of it, the legislation in yes. the AML CFD sector there? Yes, yeah, so what is really good about this is that, as Ayana mentioned before, you had the house agents aspect and the tax act, um, but this didn't really provide what you would call a proper entry control. So what the AML sphere wants is professions such as attorneys at law, accountants, real estate agents, they want proper strict entry controls to know that you are a fit and proper person. So like if you're entering, if you make an application to the authority, you have to be at least 18. Um, you have to be a person of good character um, and you also have to more or less give, I would say, um, an oath to do, to act in the best interest of your profession. So with these straight entry controls and the authority will determine what qualifications or experience is necessary to become a real estate agent or a broker so that you don't just have persons just waking up one morning, you know, I feel like being a real estate agent. It looks like it has a lot of money in it and then you have a regime that's all over the place. You know, you don't know if a person is trustworthy with your money. So at least when you go to an agent or a broker and you see um, the certificate highlighted in their window, you know at least they have been vetted. And going forward, um, that provides trust and it also provides a duty on them to ensure that business is done properly. So that now makes them a gatekeeper in the anti-money laundering regime where if a situation is suspicious or so there's a red flag, they can anonymous, anonymously make a report to the Financial Intelligence Unit who will then determine if it has to be acted upon or perhaps if it's just something that's superficial. So um, there's no harm, of course, in ensuring that um, if you have a suspicion that you make a report to the Financial Intelligence Unit. So these are the ways that this real estate agents act cross cuts into the AML CFT sphere. Oh. But could could we explore the possibility of a failure to make a, a, a report to the FIU? Um, let's say that an agent or a broker has knowledge of a, yes. um, of a suspicious transaction and, and they fail to report such. Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, so it's not really a great area per se, but if investigations go forward, let's say um, a person comes to you and, you know, just for the, to facilitate the conversation, they're telling you straight, you know, I got enough money from selling drugs and want to buy a piece of land and you more or less just say we're fine and you're going about it and investigations show that you've been communicating with this person um, you basically go and collect the money from them in the sack after they've sold the drugs you know become an accessory to the fact as well and failure to report this once it has been discovered makes you liable under the AF AML CFT Act. I think that's an extreme right. <laughs> an extreme example. There are many great areas which fall there, but if it can be proven that you had knowledge and you refused to report, um, you could become liable under the act as well. Right. So, um, how do you foresee, you know, the application of the act going forward? Uh, what, what do you foresee it being like? Yeah, I think it is a very good step which Guyana has taken. Um, countries in the region have been taking similar steps. Um, because this is seen 
not per se is a weak area, but it is an area that is abused quite often for um, money laundering purposes. Um, most uh, persons involved in drug trafficking and fraud and that type of stuff was the easiest thing to do. You know, you take the money, you buy a property, you put it in your mom's name, etc. Um, because you think it therefore makes you untouchable, and you go through an agent. So the age, the agent knows all the avenues. Um, persons who may be selling at lower prices and that type of thing, which is also another area where persons could be defrauded. So know that you have this regime um, where you have to ensure all of the persons involved in it are fit and proper. Um, the agents will know the persons who are more or less, that's for lack of better terms, say a bit shady. So at least if they fall into the regime, now they know, okay, there's a spotlight, so I have to act accordingly or else I could really run myself in trouble. If they don't like that, then I guess they will have to look for another profession. Okay. So, I guess we have covered the most, or if not all, of the uh, sections within legislation. But um, in case we have missed anything, I will just ask you to um, share anything that you think we uh, might have missed, or any um, thoughts that you have in general. I think we would have covered the act. <laughs> <laughs> we covered the act. Yeah, I think the act itself was covered... Um, for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, I think what is going to have to happen eventually, there's going to have to be a conversation on the Guyana Compliance Commission because similar to real estate agents, um, there's no supervisory authority for um, accountants and attorneys at law. And yes, I did forget to mention that. The real estate agent authority is now the supervisory authority for real estate agents for anti-money laundering purposes. So now because these activities fall under the Anti-Money Laundering Act, they're going to make sure you're doing your requisite customer due diligence. They're going to make sure that, um, let's say you're a politically exposed person, that they do enhance due diligence on those kind of matters. Um, so that's going to be an extra function of the authority as well. Uh, so for the most part, I think that is um, it in terms of the app. All right. Well, I guess that brings us to the end of uh, in this episode here. Uh, thank you both for being here and uh, going through this um, legislation with me. Um, a fairly new piece of legislation in the country and um, I hope persons are you know, receptive to it and they uh, comply with their duties and obligations set out under the Act. So to our viewers, um, as you may know, this is an initiative, this television program here is an initiative brought to you by the government of Guyana through the chambers of the Attorney General, where we have persons like uh, my colleagues here, Miss Ayanna Fable and Miss uh, Romel St. Hill, come and uh, go through different pieces of legislation, different uh, laws that have been enacted and are being executed in the country, and to just inform you, the public, of your rights under the legislation or or even your obligations which may um, exist because you know sometimes persons they say that uh, they're not aware of what the law is and um, they feel that that is a defense but um, ignorance of the law is no defense of course so it's better to know and be in the right than to claim ignorance and, and <laughs> be in the wrong so thank you for joining us um, on this episode here uh, as we went through the Real Estate Agents and Brokers Act 2023. Um, I am your host Richard Bainey. Uh, with me I had Miss Ayanna Fable, the Senior Parliamentary Counsel at the Attorney General Chambers and Mr. Romel St. Hill, our Anti-Money Laundering Countering the Financing of Terrorism and Proliferation Financing Expert um, Consultant. So thank you both for being here. Until next time see you.